I'm now going to do a demonstration on root canal preparation in a crown down approach using Gates Glidden's and Flexo files which are made from stainless steel. You can see here we've got a simulated root canal in an endo view block. You can see along here and this hasn't been prepared as yet. I'm going to take a size 10 K flex file and feel down the coronal third of the canal. And you can see here, I'm just looking for any interferences. It's important at this stage also to get some irrigation in. And you can see here that I'm actually using the syringe. And what I would like all of you to do is use it with your um, finger. So you just use really gentle pressure into the root canal and it has to be a passive movement. You can see the irrigation needle going in here. You mustn't bind it like that, else you could cause a hypochlorite accident. You must keep it out. So you could hear that that is actually sticking slightly. So you must keep it out and then introduce some of the irrigant, as you can see here, into the canal. Very gently. What I'm going to do next is take a Gates Glidden and this is a number three Gates Glidden which you can see from the banding and place that into the canal. We must only use the Gates Gliddens in the coronal third of the canal and I've got a stop on here and what I need to do now is measure where that goes to. And that is measuring at 5.5 millimetres and I'm going to um, add on approximately 2 millimetres onto that so that will make it 7.5. I'm going to place this in my handpiece in a latch grip and you must check that this actually goes in and is locked into the handpiece and also check that it actually rotates properly before you introduce it into the canal. And you mustn't have any water spraying out as well. So the water should be turned off at this point and you can see that is actually rotating around. With the Gates Glidden's, you use it in a brush stroking motion. You don't force it into the canal. You only let the Gates Glidden do what it will let you do and you must place it into the canal and it's light brush strokes on the outstroke. That's really, really important. So you place this into the canal. I am saying approximately two millimetres. To be on a cautious side, you could say 1.5 millimetres, but you have to be mindful that the stopper can move. So if you see now, I'm just doing it on the outstroke brush strokes circumferentially. If you're doing it in a molar, you must be careful of the fication. And you can see that I'm trying to keep it nice and even. I'm going to take that out now to double check that my stopper hasn't moved. As you can see, it hasn't gone down to where I measured it to, but we need to check and also get rid of some of the debris, which you can place in your sponge. So we'll just measure this again to see where it is. And you can maybe see very slightly that this, it, the stopper has moved. So I'm just gonna readjust it. So we just want it at seven and a half. I'm gonna just check that again. And light brush strokes on the way out, circumferentially. And again, always keep away from the danger zone in the fication area. Only ever do it in the safe zone. And you should remember this from your lectures. And I'm happy with that now. So I'm going to take that out. And with the Gates Gliddens, you should never leave them in the handpiece because you could cause a needle stick to yourself or your nurse. And then what I'm going to do is now irrigate again. Just gently, like this, 
And in a patient, you'll obviously have the nurse doing suction for you at the same time. I'm going to pick up my K-Flex file and just distribute any of the debris around into the solution and just go a little bit further down than where your gates went to and I'm going to just irrigate again. Then I'm going to use a gate skidden 2, put that in, put the stop down, measure where that goes to, seven and a half, and then add on a couple of millimetres onto that. That's at 9.5. Place this in the handpiece again, making sure it's safely in. Check the measurement of this at 9.5 millimetres. And then again, gate glidden to in a brush stroking motion. And just see circumferentially around just going to check again to see whether this stop has moved and decided to be a bit on the cautious side with this because I feel as if I'm forcing it in to the canal so I'm going to change it to 9 millimetres rather than uh, 9.5. Just going to check again to see whether that's right. So I'm happy with that now. I've decided not to take that down any further. So you should never take it if you're having to force it into the canal. So I'm now finished with my Gates Glidden's and I've done the coronal part of that preparation. Place some more irrigant into the canal. I'm now going to use a size 10K flex file and see whether I can negotiate further down. And we have an estimated length at this stage on a patient you would be using an apex locator and the apex locator would confirm when the file is just coming through the apical foramen and on this block this is at 17 millimeters and I'll just check. So for your preparation as you already know from your lectures you have to come back into the apical constriction. You will have to come back one millimeter from here. So your working length will now be 16 millimeters. However, because this file easily goes down to 17, we'll keep this as the patency file. And that keeps the canal um, patent and stops any blockages. And in a patient, uh, you might see some exudate coming from the canal and it's very important to use this patency file in between every single file that you use. And in between every single file you use, you must irrigate with hypochlorite. So you can see that here and do it until the debris runs clear. Place the size 10 in again. And it's really important, the motion of the file. It's in a watch winding motion backwards and forwards. Just watch wind backwards and forwards until you get a little bit of apical resistance and make a little cut and come out. And it's a very, very light force that you can see again with my fingers. And you'll see this all the way through the video of the preparation of the root canal. So I'm now going to pick up my size 15 file and measure it to 16 millimetres. So that's at 16 millimetres. Now I'm going to place the size 15 in the canal and see if that goes to length. 
and it does. Sometimes this doesn't happen. Sometimes you, the file doesn't go in easily. In this case, it has done. So you can see the backwards and forwards motion and the watch winding. Now it's really important that again, use the irrigant, any debris is run through and then I use my patency file again which is the size 10 that you can see here just to make sure there's no blockages backwards and forwards. I'm now going to use my size 20 file and place that in the canal. Now you can see here that's measured to 16. This at this moment in time will not go down, you'd have to force it. What we aim to do at this stage is try and get a larger file down to the working length and in these blocks the best file to get down to the working length is a size 25. That varies in patience because some canals are larger than others but for this purpose we're going to get our master apical file down to a 25. So I'm just going to do a little bit of watch winding, I'm not going to force it and I'm going to take it out. Place irrigant in there again and then use my patency file backwards and forwards and you can see that we haven't got any debris yet. I'm then going to pick up my size 25 file and see where that will go. The process that I'm now going to do is called serial step back shaping. This enables me to get my size 25 file down to the working length. So I just little bit of apical pressure backwards and forwards and out. Another little bit of apical pressure backwards and forwards and out. I'm going to pick up my size 30. The idea of this is to enlarge the canal and remove any coronal interferences to allow some larger files to go down into the canal. So you can see that backwards and forwards motion and I'm actually enlarging the canal further up. I would suggest going three sizes back and you can see that I'm enlarging the canal. It's very important to do irrigation really in between the files and patency again. So now what I'm going to do is see where my size 20 goes to if that actually goes further down. And you can see now that actually goes down to length with the process that I've just done. So it easily goes down. And just, it's a good idea to work the file until it's slightly looser in the canal, but it just goes to the working length. The way to test this is, is place the file in and then push it down and it shouldn't go any further than the working length with just simple finger pressure. So I'm happy now that that's loose enough. You shouldn't again have to force it, you just put it in and it should go to length. I'm going to irrigate again, use a patency file backwards and forwards and then try the size 25. On these blocks what you really need to do is actually bend the file slightly, especially on the larger sizes. So you can see here, I've put a slight kink in the file. I we'll just have to modify it slightly to get it round that curve. Need to do some more work with this file to get it down to length. So it's backwards and forwards motion and out and then again we need to do the serial step back shaping so I've got a 25 it doesn't at the moment go down to length so I need to pick up the size 30 make a few little cuts then a size 35 and make a few cuts and then 40 and as I suggested you really need to go back three sizes. 
irrigate again and use a patency file to stop any blockages. We'll now see whether the file actually goes down. I'm quite happy that that goes down to length. You must check your stoppers to see that it hasn't moved because sometimes the stoppers can actually move. So I'm happy that that's actually at 16 where we're supposed to be. So need to do a little bit more work with it because it's a little bit on the tight side, just a tiny bit. But as you can see, that, that doesn't push down any further. So I'm fairly happy with that. So as I said from the beginning, we want a size 25 on this block as your master apical file. And as you will notice now, it looks as if we've just got a slight blockage. So I'm just trying to remove that and that can easily happen. So just illustrating that this can happen in the perspex blocks and it can happen in canals. So I'm happy, I'm happy now that that's, that's gone because it is very, very easy to get a blockage and a ledge. Just going to irrigate again. And check again that my 25 goes down smoothly, which it does. Now, as you say, the size 25 is my master apical file size. In certain canals, the canal size will be larger than this, so at this point you need to gauge. If you don't gauge your apical part of the preparation properly, you could extrude your gutta perca root filling. So I'm happy that you won't extrude because I've checked again that that won't push any further. I'm now going to start the step back process, which means that I'm going to step back from the master apical file from here and join to where the Gates Giddens preparations have been to create the flare that we need. This helps in many different ways. It helps us deliver the irrigant further down apically, but it also helps with our obturation of the canal. So in these blocks, I'm going to do one millimetre step back. Sometimes you need to do a half a millimetre step back in some larger canals. So what I need to do is now measure my size 30 to 15 millimetres because my working length was 16. Also in the block, and we're just going to slightly bend the file very, very slightly because these are stainless steel um, and they're quite rigid. And then I'm going to place this in the canal and try and do the step back procedure. Just doing a few cuts here. I'm going to irrigate again. And you can probably see a little bit of debris in the canal there. I just need to, to get it into the solution, which you can probably see lifting up and coming out. So this is the idea of the, the patency file. And again, irrigate until the irrigant runs clear and then you have no more debris. Then I'm going to pick up a size 35 which is a turquoise colour and I'm going to measure that to 14 millimetres. Slightly bend this again and place it in the canal and you can see the cutting action that it's doing. If you can't get the files down to where they should go, you can go through the serial step back shaping wave if you can't get it down, which means here I would use a 30, 35, 40 
and come back in the canal to where the file engages. But I'm quite happy with this at the moment. I'm just going to check it again just to see that the, the stopper hasn't moved. And again, get rid of the debris which you can see is going apically. Put it into the solution again with the patency file and make sure it runs clean. And just check that you can get patency and you're not getting any blockages. So I'm now going to pick up a size 40 file and place it to 13 millimetres. As you can see on here. Just going to make a few cuts. Again, not to force it. and the watch winding until you get a little bit of resistance and then pull out. You just need to check that the stop hasn't moved. Which it hasn't. And then just place the irrigant back in again. And then do the patency. It's quite easy to get blockages at this stage um, because I felt one just very slightly within there. So again, irrigate and try and get the debris out and then backwards and forwards again until the solution runs clear. And then I'm going to pick up a size 45 and do it to 12 millimetres. backwards and forwards motion, make a few little cuts, irrigate again, get rid of the debris, patency file, backwards and forwards, pick up a size 50 which is at 11 millimetres, So you can see here now that's easily going down. At this stage again, check, check the stops to see that it isn't going down further than it should be, which it has moved. You can see here that that's actually moved down quite far, so we need to move that back again. and then do it to 11 millimetres. So that easily goes in, so there's not really any preparation needed with that file. Pick up a size 55 and then measure that to 10 millimetres. What you'll find with some of the canals, because you've done the gates gliddens, you might not need to do much preparation with these files further up. And irrigate again patency in between pick up a size 60 and then do that to 9 millimeters and you can see easily that goes in so we've done quite a lot of preparation with this but we need to check that it's gauged at that Irrigate again. Patency file and then pick up a size 70 and then that needs to go to 8 millimetres. Place 
place that in the canal. And again, you can see that a lot of the preparation's been done, but you need to check that you can step back because if you haven't done much preparation with your gates gliddens, you'll find that you'll need to do more preparation with the hand files. And then the final one is size 80, and that's at seven millimeters. And then just place that in the canal. then irrigate again and do the patency file. Pick up a smaller size file such as a size 20 and at about 15 millimeters is try and smooth off the preparation. So you can do some circumferential filing to smooth off around, to smooth off the taper. Just all the way around the walls. Very, very carefully, very small amplitude um, filing. Just to finish it off. Irrigate again. Patency file. And then as a final check to gauge, you need to pick up your size 25, which is your master apical file size, and check that, that it goes to 16 millimeters. and check that the file doesn't push through. So the 25 is nice and secure. It doesn't want to go any further. And that I'm happy with that. You can check that the size 30 doesn't go down to length as well. So the way to check your apical gauging is pick up the size 30 and check that it doesn't go down to 16. And you can see here that it doesn't go down to 16, so that the preparation of the canal has been done correctly. And just need to irrigate again. And, and that's the end of the preparation.